Hi and welcome to Matrix Moments. This is Saloni and today's episode is a part 2 to the India Venture Opportunity, a podcast we hosted last year with Mithen Sampath, angel investor, startup advisor and former CSO at Times Internet, as well as Samadha Sharma, editor at Emerging Businesses and Startups at Economic Times, along with Tarun Davda, managing director at Matrix Partners India. They discussed and dissected the state of affairs in the startup ecosystem and we decided that it was now time for part 2 of this conversation and this time we also have a seasoned entrepreneur perspective that's been added to the mix with Amrish Rao the CEO of Pine Labs. We talk about the recent China ban and its ramifications, Jio's impact on startups and the fundraising environment and of course the covid effect on India's digital economy among other topics. Tune in. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us on Matrix Moments. Uh, it's a pleasure to have all of you. Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction before we uh, dive in and I'm going to just go on the order on which I have you all on my screen. So I'll start with Samadha who's also the moderator for today's episode. Samadha, thank you for joining us. Uh, as everyone knows, Samadha is the uh, most well-known journalist in the Indian startup ecosystem. Uh, she's been with ET now and before that uh, was with Times of India. Um Next in line is Amrish Rao. Amrish, thank you for joining us. Uh, Amrish is the CEO at Pine Labs and was earlier the founder of uh, Citrus Pay, uh, which was acquired by PayU. And finally, Mithen, uh, who is uh, currently, I guess, chilling and in between <laughs> figuring out what next. Uh, Mithen was earlier chief strategy officer at uh, Times Internet and has also been a very prolific angel. So thank you all. Really appreciate you all making the time. and uh, i'm guess i'm looking for a really interesting discussion today thank you for joining thanks uh, thanks tarun um, i think it's taken us a year and a pandemic and methane being a free agent to get us <laughs> back together <laughs> uh, and, and how the world has changed right since then it's how been the a world year we yeah. had, so, we've had a uh, pandemic we've had geo raise 15 billion and uh, we've had so much more happen so yeah if uh, you know there are uh, uh, audiences who would have caught up uh, with us last time around that was uh, more than a year ago it was mithen uh, tarun and i discussing the venture opportunity in india this time uh, we thought we should definitely get a person operating a business so uh, we have amrish with us too just to give a little bit of context and then we'll uh, straight away sort of dive in uh, you know uh, the thought came to uh, tarun me and uh, you know methane a while back when we were somehow we chanced upon uh, last year's recording and so many things that we discussed out there uh, i mean it, it was uh, all of it sort of unfolded in the next 6 to 8 months whether it was geo uh, the juggernaut uh, that unfolded uh, you know the rise of edtech uh, methane had spoken about it 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 was just very interesting to sort of go back and uh, you know listen to that podcast uh considering we you know summed up a lot of stuff which would happen and uh, you know take place in the next 6 to 8 months so i want to kick off uh, you know today with uh, three of you just if you could give your take in terms of what has really happened what has changed in the last 6 to 8 months uh, i mean obviously covid is an overarching uh, you know impact it has had on all businesses uh, but beyond that i mean how how are, how is the new economy right now taking to this jolt uh, considering the macro indicators are extremely abysmal at this point so listen i think it's been uh, i mean obviously at a personal level and you know as a country obviously we've uh, you know pandemic has been uh, you know fairly bad for a lot of people um, on the business side though i think things started off fairly negatively um, i remember back in march um you know speaking to portfolio founders you know almost every day and there was a lot of uncertainty um i think that continued through early times of lockdown maybe april may everybody was just focused on survival everybody was just focused on cutting burn extending runway you know all the all the stuff that we've spoken about and read about right yeah uh, and then i think there was i think i first started picking up these signals i guess from the us where there was this very famous chart where we've seen you know three months in three uh, three decades in three yeah. uh, months right which would showed the sort of e-commerce uh, penetration for amazon and several other companies and how that had sort of peaked 
Um, and I think it quickly became clear that we were seeing early signs of something similar happening in India. It was more obvious in some sectors like ed tech and gaming and health tech and some of these. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I, I think it's 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 really interesting how it isn't written about as much in India yet. But I think we're seeing very similar signs happening in India. I'll give you an example. So I spoke to a e-commerce uh, startup founder just this morning. Uh, yeah. It's a mid-sized company. Obviously, I can't share the name, but I'll 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 tell you why. Uh, his business was at zero all of mm-hmm. April and May. Okay, and this is a company which has raised you know between fifty to hundred million US dollars. Okay, uh, he told me he has been growing fifty percent month on month for the last three months uh, since July, since uh, the the business has restarted. He will hit a billion dollars in annualized GMV next month uh, from zero in April yeah. and May. Okay, and his economics are and so he's he 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 will be three x of what he was pre COVID, uh, and he's grown that okay. quickly. So Feb versus October will be, you know, uh, more than more than three x. Uh, and the best part is uh, he's been cash flow positive for the last four months. Uh, he had no idea how the business would make money back in February. Mm. They were burning money at a contribution level. And I think when I speak to a lot of founders, even in sort of non ed tech domains, I'm seeing a very similar sort of experience. Saying businesses never look better. uh you know especially on the you know economics front things are better and because essentially all the incentives have gone away all the discounts have gone away right mm. uh, or at least you know m- uh, massively reduced so i think that's one big thing i think the 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 second thing is i think there is a recognition that those who have really hustled through the last 3 or 4 months and have basically been very nimble in figuring out you know alternate revenue models alternate cons- you know consumer acquisition channels i think a lot of them are seeing the benefits of that today but uh, amrish you want to talk a little about what really is uh, propelling this growth because like i said i mean the uh, macro economic indicators and the real economy is in complete shambles at this point so what is giving uh, you know a lot of these businesses the traction is it only the digital edge What, what what is happening see if you break it up into three parts right which is the consumer second is the business and third is the investor each one of them is going through a completely different experience through the pandemic uh and and i say this very seriously that when it comes to a consumer in india we are getting to see a completely different behavior where the consumer is first time turning around and saying i want to invest in my own self i'll give you an example uh coming out of the covid lockdowns in some of the markets what we have seen is suddenly dishwashers and uh, you know some of those electronic products which were not procured before the pandemic has started mm-hmm. to pop off so so you know the classic uh, indian who was saying i'll keep money for the next generation is saying yeah. nahi boss i want to spend on my own self and i will spend now i also want to spend on my children so mm-hmm. where they go what they learn what is they going to be the outcome and hence you would see ed tech when you would see consumer durables growth mobile phones a uh, clear consumption growth in those areas right so as a investor investor is saying i want to spend for now i don't want to spend for the future so that's one big behavioral change mm-hmm. at least in india second thing what we am getting to see is at a business level so one of the big things which i have found very difficult is not the slowing down of the economy but the acceleration of things so at any point of time there are five things to solve for at the same time you're taking out costs out of the business so i think the business models in which we are operating have definitely improved so that's on the business side on the investor side look i i kid you not the real story is about liquidity yeah uh, th- this pandemic has brought about insane amount of liquidity yeah. i mean to have snowflake go 70 billion dollars yeah. while snowflake was valued 15 months back at 3 billion dollars yeah it's not business it's liquidity yeah no i was going to come to that point uh, because that is what i was getting at you know i mean i'm just fearing is it again calling out the uh, you know the potential of the market too soon i mean it, it's happened every 2 3 years and and then again now we're seeing oh this is going to be the time when digital will really take off uh how much of it is actually happening on ground and will uh become businesses which will be solid businesses and not really about money sort of coming in i think the big investments you're seeing are still in companies that had some scale yeah one thing you're seeing like 
you know early stage series a series b kind of stuff happening you know above or so, that, so that's also picked up right uh, methane i mean the it is slowly happening but i yeah. think you see yeah. so i think there are two things happening so one is i think the sectors that have seen acceleration right to the point that amrish made and, and tarun made which is you know business models have become better because incentives have gone away everyone said mm. yeah uh, everyone's extending their own runways and i think actually so business models have become better all of a sudden yeah second thing is consumer behavior shift is real and it's big both on the consumer side and the enterprise side i think even enterprises are, are investing in tech solutions a lot more and 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 so on so forth because they just had to in fact if they didn't they wouldn't be able to operate right yeah uh, i think i think as a result of that there's been a shift of spends there's a dislocation of spends from certain things to certain other things and the where the shift has happened is mostly internet enabled um you know sort of companies and so yeah. as a result of that business models improved profitability is now line of sight mm. and actually also think that you know i think a few tailwinds that were there going in were the adoption of things like upi and online payments and stuff like that i mean you know just even before covid you know you had over 100 million 120 million monthly transacting upi users yeah so now imagine the internet imagine our situation if a lot of this was not in place right that friction mm. of, of 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 transacting would have been much much higher all that friction is much much lower now and so things are picking up so i think that um i still think investors are being cautious on many different dimensions i think there's optimism on education on uh, enterprise related some connectivity stuff things like that mm. Mm. Uh, there's optimism on stuff like gaming because you know again there's a dislocation right i couldn't go to the movies i'm going to spend on gaming or i'm going to buy that ott subscription or i'm going to do short video or whatever so mm. you're seeing people invest in dislocations um as opposed to more broad stuff yeah. uh, and then secondly you know uh, look as i'm reset there's so much liquidity yeah and that by the way this morning's news of uh, the fed saying that we're going to keep interest rate at zero till 2023 yeah. beginning of a massive bull run like doesn't matter what you think now yeah. don't apply basic sort of you know what is my sort of pe ratio and stuff none of it is going to be making any sense because yeah. money is just going to go there and you'll be a fool to bet against the momentum hmm. you know every conversation uh, gets me to that point that you know our enthusiasm around the indian ecosystem is always contingent to the money that is coming it is it hasn't got to the point of celebrating an ipo like snowflake yet right so um i mean what is i i know i mean i may i i am not uh, i'm not really going by uh, you know what the investors would think but again i think we are getting into a stage where there is a lot of money it needs to be deployed i don't know if the fundamentals have really changed in 6 months i'll tell you one other thing that's changed samida okay one of the fundamental operating variable in the india operating system okay the fact that the indian government has started to take very specific and strict measures around what they will allow and not allow and what yeah. i think is sort of step zero of the unveiling of a great indian firewall yeah as that's happening i think sector by sector by sector there will be companies which will win and win very big on the back yeah. of this sort of soft firewall hmm. uh, i think that has changed now different people have different interpretations of that i think different people have different predictions of that um and like you know the tiktok opportunity right like suddenly it's it's happened yeah. a few yeah. other things that that have happened as well and and of course the big thing you've seen is that look the biggest validation of the fact that the india story is very very real hmm. is the billion dollars that went into geo i mean you got everybody and their mother lining no, up so uh, you know let me just break that down i mean there were two there were two points sorry amri sorry i just wanted to cut in because you know one of the things that we in this call shouldn't uh, miss is you know we we guys at least specifically those guys you know who are on this uh, uh, podcast here is i guess we are in a little bit of a bubble right i think one yes. of the parts which we have to talk I'm about i'm not uh, the, uh, the the other two gentlemen <laughs> you know uh, you know i've been talking to a few of my friends who run payment companies and these are offline payment companies and i've also been talking to bankers some of the stories which i'm getting to hear are so scary it is unbelievable yes yes so, so amrish i want you to highlight those because this I, is what I, i'm saying i, 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 I want to make a point i want yeah. to make a point for the first time when there are layoffs which are happening 
people are not turning around and saying theek hai yaar i'll get another job for the first time you're getting to see uh, you know employees actually come back and really make requests after request saying please hold on please keep us there these are tough times these banker friends of mine they are saying i've never seen some of these emails come before hmm. because in general economy is growing everybody knows i leave from here i'll have another job yeah. waiting for me i think one of the big fears that i have is in the real economy let's take banking right in banking when you look at the back offices that some of these banks have they're yeah. like you know 200000 people out there now all of this got digitized or at least a large portion of that got digitized in the last 3 4 months time now the banks are saying any which way i think we can reduce about 25 to 30% of the staff these are some unbelievably bad stories that you're getting to hear yeah and i feel sometimes you know and this is maybe the twitter for the people to whom i follow uh, i don't think so i'm getting to feel it Next twitter yeah it, it is it is really ugly out there in terms of the job market and the job losses which are being seen out there and the opportunities which people might have around it yeah uh obviously in india it is sort of uh, a little more than just uh, you know a, a, a tiktok led thing it it's a wider anti china sentiment uh, which uh, you know which has led to ban of you know tiktok and many other apps uh tell me i mean how do we how do we kind of leverage from this because uh, i mean there are two schools of thought i mean what uh, mithen uh, mentioned was there would be some businesses which would flourish because of this we've not really seen too much you know in terms of adoption because it's not easy to just uh you know have the same kind of success as tiktok did uh what what does it really mean because there's also a flip side to it i mean investors will become a little wary uh coming into uh, you know looking at india and and the way you know one fine day you can just ban you know uh, hundreds of apps w- what does it mean I think there's two three things. Listen, I think the 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 point you're making is very valid. I think the policy flip flop is is the worst thing investors want to see. Um, you know, everybody likes stuff to be sort of consistent, right? Whether yeah. you're consistently against it or you're consistently for it, that's fine. But people expect consistency, yeah. right? I just think that in the last few years, the the overall worldwide political sentiment uh, has just shifted so dramatically. uh you know having the president of the united states sort of involved in deal making uh for a private company is, is something that none of us would have imagined you know uh, even 6 months ago yeah. right so i think we are we are living in you know extremely uh <laughs> sort of uh, strange time um as far as i think the india app ban listen as a i can i can speak on behalf of you know an investor in india who's who's sort of you know uh uh focused largely on the digital economy obviously um uh, is it a good thing for indian companies yes it is um did the china firewall benefit local chinese companies absolutely did yeah. um was did it seem like there was an unfair kind of you know uh um ground that one was you know indian companies were competing with yes it did right because on the one hand chinese companies don't allow any of the companies from outside china you know operate there but they're sort of going and dominating you know in several countries thankfully in india a large part of it other than tiktok a large part of it was through investments in indian companies right yeah. and we should talk about the impact of those investments going away mm. so if you ask me for example are there special are there certain sectors where only chinese investors were bullish especially when it came to media you know content yeah. you know social absolutely they were will will companies in those sectors you know probably have a little bit of a harder time to raise cash i think it will happen right yeah it's already uh, we can see it's, 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 we can already see it right i think in india chinese chinese you know funds slash companies have put in you know several billion dollars in the last 5 years yeah about 4 billion i think i think more than half of indian unicorns have some sort of chinese color to their money uh if you ask me i think over time a lot of it will get negated and there will be enough capital chasing hmm. companies right i think the china thing is a point in time and there will be some time for it to correct um it take geo for example right i think people underestimate what geo itself has done uh, through its fundraise for the first time there is a large company that can absorb 10 15 20 billion dollars of foreign capital 
Mm. Those investors for the first time have started looking at India as a serious market. We've already seen Silver Lake, who started their, you know, India sort of uh, uh, foray with Jio, and now we've gone and invested in Byju's, right? Mm. And I think the, the 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 very fact that India has come on their radar is something that you know I think we all should recognize that that is what is the is the bigger second order effect of what Jio has done, mm. right? And I think that will continue. So is is policy flip flop good? No, it isn't. but you know from a from a local indian venture ecosystem is it a net positive i think it is amrish uh, you know i think you would be uh, able to uh, you know give some more perspective on uh, payments i mean that's highly regulated has always been yeah so look i think uh, you got to separate out two things right one is uh, one is nationalism and the fact that we want to make india strong and indian uh, business is stronger i think that part of it i'm in violent agreement with that i don't think so there's anybody who would disagree with that hmm. i think when let's come into the second level right when it when you come into the second level i think the policy flip flops have been unfortunate so so for example i i must tell you this right i haven't met a politician uh, or or actually a senior banker when hmm. he hears about payment fees the first reaction is not going to be like oh take off mdr Yeah. Uh, invariably, everybody thinks that that's the secret to solving for the payments problem. But mm-hmm. what that really tells me is that you're not taking time to understand how the industry works, and you are allowed to play around with the industry, even yeah. if you've taken only your five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes to understand it. Now, uh, I think those are things that we've got to be very careful about. Right now, we have a situation where. rupee cards are not not being promoted in india by indian banks so it's actually gone exactly opposite which says that this is the time in which rupee should be growing yeah. we suddenly have a situation where rupee is not being promoted because there's no mdr on business lost the original goal of rupee itself yeah exactly right so now the other piece to it is uh, on on one side we have we want to have our payment systems go global yeah that requires investment so that payment system has to make money uh, so we've got to open this up i think the second order of some of these decisions are not being thought through uh, but you know there are under nahi so things will change and uh, you know we'll get there within you you want to talk a little about what really is the kind of leverage that uh, you know come and you you've been an investor in some of these companies you've watched uh, you know a lot of the uh social apps uh, very closely uh tell me i mean is is there actually does it open up space for uh, indian uh, you know companies to do well uh, in in a in a situation where tiktok is not there is is it that easy look i don't think it's that easy but i think what's what the, the easy part is i think tiktok has trained the user hmm. and trained um a lot of creators in the format right and so i think there's a lot of supply of content i think there's a great amount of demand so it's like you know once people get a taste of something which they like and lots of people get it mm-hmm. uh, then you know if the supply goes away somebody else has to supply and kind of come back and make that supply happen right so yeah. i think that's what's happening how long does this ban last right um, and and that's anybody's guess right okay. that's yeah somebody saying that you know some guy could spend 7 minutes on the topic tomorrow and decide chalo abhi theek hai abhi khol do Right? You don't know. It's so like whack a mole hmm. uh, and unpredictable. So, so the question is, um, you know, if TikTok comes back easily, um, then will the creators go back and the audience go back? The algorithm is definitely way ahead of everybody else. Six hundred million DAUs in China. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable, right? So, I think it's a short-term bench. Uh, I think winning is not obvious. You have to keep investing a lot. Um, but there's definitely demand creation, which is clear. So. is the category made the answer is yes and we still don't know if there's money to be made right it's not it's like even not tiktok money. was i mean I there's a lot of money to be made look i think it's one of those video formats which is far more engaging as opposed to ott um also you know the format enables a fair degree of <clears throat> you know performance led advertising right you've got the you know you're flipping 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 through videos um a full screen ad experience a lot better than an ott experience which is on the you know typically landscape and you know the whole experience is very different so i think i think on video there's definitely the short form video there's definitely a lot more monetizable as opposed to long form video 
So, so um, I just yeah. wanted to add into what uh, Miten was saying, right? So, uh, see, one of the things which uh, which I have been noticing right now is the number of founders in India who are IITNs and uh, you know great uh, Bitpilani and then Manipal and great engineering colleges. I feel that our engineers are going to solve for really difficult problems if they are given a three four year slot where there is no competition coming in there. H1B is, as it is messed up people's dreams of going to the US. If you have a three, four year period for our engineers to actually build on something, I think we could be looking at something really special coming out of India in terms of uh, what kind of products which are being delivered. Uh, this is maybe this is just being hopeful. Geo raising, you know, this mammoth 15, 20 billion, uh, I've lost count. Um, I, I remember when this was happening, uh, you know, this and I ended up writing about it, you know, that uh, there was there was so much being spoken about what Geo was doing in the last, uh, you know, one year or so in terms of, you know, their own products and stuff. But really, the venture community and the startup community at large was not uh, was not really uh, aware in terms of, you know, its plan to sort of do what it went ahead in and you know the, the entire fundraising and things like that um i want to understand you know what is it that uh, while there is a simplistic reading to this that you know google and facebook uh, everyone sort of uh, you know aligned with reliance because it helps them in their uh, you know policy push and we know that you know they've not done a great job in specifically facebook uh, in india uh, and even in the us uh, is that a very simplistic read uh, that, you know, you align with Reliance and everything is hunky-dory from uh, next day onwards? I mean, it's not to really be happened. WhatsApp Pay is still in a limbo. Um, Mithin, uh, you're, you're eager to chime in. It's a phenomenal tragedy that we're living through. Okay. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll get back for saying this. But I think we're just sitting around and witnessing one company be able to sort of have disproportionate leverage uh, over um, the market. I see no business case for Facebook investing in Geo. And I repeat again, I see no business case for Facebook investing in Geo beyond saying we need regulatory help. That is a white collar way of saying there's corruption involved. And if the government gets upset, I've invested somewhere with some friend of the government. This, all of us are losing. Um, at, the, at the benefit of uh, one one company, sure that one company is uh, creating a lot of value in the market, and you know I'm also a shareholder in the market, you know through the BSC or whatever. But I, I don't. I, I feel massively uncomfortable about what's gone on, and the caliber of people who participated in what's gone on. That's it's massively disappointing. So, what do you think led to it? I, I don't know what's led to it, but um, I can I can you know. Uh, my view is that, again, it's baffling to see, again, Facebook and Google both investing billions of dollars in one company. Um, the arch nemesis in the market. They fight on every dimension that you can find. I mean, this whole idea that you get a friend with the regulatory clout in the market. Um, who, who says that is the only reason? I mean, it, it could just be that they d did not see anything of that scale uh, before in India. Investment. These are not investment companies. General Atlantic investing or Silver Lake investing makes sense. Google and Facebook are not investors. Matrix is an investor. No, I, I know. Uh, Facebook. In fact, the other thing I'll say, this is the single largest investment that Facebook would have made outside of acquisitions. So, uh, take a telco. To me, I, I, maybe I'm dumb, but See, I, I think a lot of that will be uh, is still to uh, play out. So we don't really know. And like I said, I mean, if people thought it was just as simple as this, then uh, WhatsApp Pay would be live the next day, and uh, you know, uh, we would all. Like this, yeah. huh? so, Come on. <laughs> so, so, uh, and, uh, two things. First of all, I'm in violent agreement with Mithen. I'm going to just give a, give a slightly different picture. So when I got into this whole, uh, you know, I was a corporate executive when I got into the whole startup world, everybody was, oh my God, Steve Jobs, he will never compromise on anything. He wants to create the best products. He will never compromise for something which is unclear. When I see what's happening, I really have to ask the question saying, what happened to singular focus, believing in your product, believing in your designs, believing in yourself? How did you become an investment company? Violent agreement. But 
I'm going to talk about something different, right? Reliance has not delivered free cash flows for the last 10 years. So there is no need for anybody to sit around and think that Reliance has a right to win. I think the bigger point which I'm trying to make out here is Janta Janardhan, they will decide what is a good product. If you are delivering a good product, that product will stick. And I'm not convinced that somebody has the right to win. And again, it's not a comment about Reliance. I'm saying neither Reliance, neither Google, neither Paytm, nobody has a right to win. It's up to you, how you look at your competition, how you're going to be uh, fighting it out. That's that's the second part. The third part, a very important part, at least from where I come, I still believe that there is honesty and integrity. So for example, the Reserve Bank of India, I have such a high regard from Reserve Bank of India over the years, I can guarantee that Reserve Bank of India is not going to, you know, roll over and just move out of the way and let somebody come in and take charge of a certain sector. Uh, there are people out there who have built this institution over a period of time. And I do believe that those people will continue to operate with a certain level of integrity. You know, I might be proved wrong. Uh, but this is the way at least I want to start on that topic. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Tarun, uh, I want I wanted to... Uh, you know, maybe give us a perspective from you being a VC. Uh, while there's been, I mean, multiple people have said that it, it's, an, including Mithane, uh, that, you know, why would uh, sort of uh, Silver Lake, uh, you know, uh, funds which have never really invested in India, they've come in, it, it's going to be, it actually facilitates more investors to look at the India story. Is that so or actually there is concentration of too much of capital in one company along with, uh, you know, a collective of sort being formed, which is, which is not so great, uh, you know, for early stage companies or, or uh, otherwise as well uh, for people who are looking to raise money. And yeah. there, there, there are some specific examples, right? Uh, grocery, uh, a few others where they have, very visibly shown uh, that, you know, they'll be very aggressive. And we know of companies which are not being able to raise because of the reliance factor uh, playing out. Yeah, so I have a slightly different view. Uh, uh, you know, so let me let me address three or four different points, right? See, I think the first thing that, you know, very few people recognize is world over. Some of the best companies that we all sort of use and know and respect uh, largely are one-trick ponies. There are very few companies that have, it's hard enough to build a single business line. Having one company that will dominate, you know, telecom and payments and grocery and like, you know, list, it's not easy, right? Amazon was a retail company for, you know, two decades. It added AWS, it's added, you know, a few other lines, but it, th these are very, very, very rare companies that have been able to crack more than, you know, one or two or three businesses. Okay. So I think very often we forget that 90% of the most successful business in the world are still one-trick ponies. They figured out one thing and they do it really well. I don't see a reason, at least till today, to believe that Reliance will be a very different story. They will crack one or two things and they'll do it really well. The rest of the stuff, they will take their own time to figure out. It's not so easy and India is not an easy sort of country to operate in. So that's number one. I think number two, when it comes to, if I take, you know, you spoke about, is it just policy? I don't think it's just policy. If I, if I take a very different view from what, you know, Mithen and Amish has taken, I think there's an argument to say that all these investors have been waiting on the sidelines, yeah. looking at India as the last sort of Raj remaining Indian internet market. They actually don't know. They're like, kuch chal hai. there's a lot of competition, you know, startups keep getting funded, you know, profitability, IPO, nothing is there. Yeah. Let me just invest in the index. Yeah. And as far as I see, I think a lot of these people have basically looked at it as optionality. They've said Geo is the index for Indian internet. They are the pipe. There will be multiple things that will flow through that pipe. If we are part of the pipe, we won't lose money. And then there's an optionality for me to make money. Is there a side benefit that there's a toll that they feel they are paying to get some favors? Who the hell knows? I mean, the yeah. reality is none of us in those rooms in those discussions to know what really went behind it. Yeah. So I don't think it's as simplistic as a toll or to get any favors or whatever it is. I think our government is smart enough and uh, at least they won't do anything blatantly uh, to the point you made around WhatsApp Pay. Uh, will will some of these things be seen with a more positive lens? I, I think that's the way you know uh, things happen, and it may may as well it may may be that way. I don't know, right? But in my mind, it is actually somebody betting on that index and saying if there is so Alibaba and Tencent today. If you take China, 
China's had about three trillion dollars of internet market cap that was created in the last decade. Okay, one out of the three trillion went into two companies, Alibaba and Tencent. Right. I think the call people is taking is that Jio is that Alibaba and Tencent of India. Yeah. And let me just play the market. It's too much. There's too much noise today. It's all still very early. Let me just come in and I'll learn through my investment in Jio. And it's a fairly safe investment. You know, uh, the uh, Ambani's won't lose money. And, and, I, and, and also, they're betting on the man. I'll bring this, uh, you know, discussion to an end with like quick thirty-second, uh, you know, overview from all of you guys. A quick uh, summary of the way you personally have been able to, uh, you know, gear yourself to face this in the last six eight months. You know, the 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 one formula for me that's that's been working is. uh not to get overly excited or overly pessimistic uh mm. with 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 things too fast i think we're sitting in this environment where there is like there was a tremendous amount of bad news at once and there was a tremendous amount yeah. of you know, like up and down good news i think that the world changes rapidly but doesn't change so rapidly in so many things at once and so um i think for me um uh, you know uh, i i i read very widely so i get you know when when things are optimistic i'm overly optimistic when things are negative i'm overly negative so just working to that to be not like massively up and down to become a bit more of a smooth so yeah. uh, i i've started to uh, react a bit more slowly to things you become uh, you gone into the zen mode you know i've actually been trying to break the two things into uh, separate parts right one is work and i'm saying as work as a responsibility to your to what i do you got to keep you know adopting to change and what's going to come and all of that so that's a good part but i think the second part which i don't want to do is 15 years from today when i look back at this period and if the only thing which sticks in my mind so i did a lot of zoom calls i said i'll be so disappointed with my life right can you imagine somebody asking you hey you know you were, you lived through the spanish flu what did you do i was on zoom calls No, I really want to, you know. Quite go, ironical because we are on a Zoom call right now. Yeah, so you, can you imagine twenty-five later, somebody comes and asks you, "What was it during the COVID nineteen crisis?" I don't know. I was on a Zoom call. So I think I want to spend time in terms of what's happening around the world, how people are reacting. So to uh, Mitain's point, I spend a lot of time on that, and I try and you know completely take my mind away from work and work-related activities. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's a very conscious effort. Saying, what did I learn? Right. Tarun. So uh, I've actually been terrible. I'm guilty of doing exactly what uh, Amru said. He doesn't <laughs> want to do. So unfortunately, work-life balance uh, at least used to be a concept that we used to look forward to before the pandemic. Yeah. I think the pandemic I've given up all hopes around work-life yeah. balance yeah. because literally life is between your office, your 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 desk at home, and the bed, and the desk back at home, yeah. and yeah. the bed. And so unfortunately, it's been a lot of that. But uh, otherwise, listen, I I I, I think you know. for me 2020 is about you know just surviving i think anyone who comes out of this uh uh will will come out stronger and that's what i tell a lot of our portfolio founders saying that just just focus on like for, especially the ones who are obviously negatively hit is mm. just just focus on survival and you know anyone who comes out will be a winner yeah makes sense great uh, thank you gentlemen for taking our time and uh, hopefully it should not take us another year and one more pandemic <laughs> <laughs> to get all of you uh, and and be together uh, thanks so much ha <laughs> huh? sorry mitain what said no more pandemics i'm opting out of that i know, I know. <laughs> on that note thank on you everyone that. really 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 appreciate all of you taking your time and doing this and samita thank you so much for moderating uh, excellently as always thank you and thank we you. will continue thank the chat everyone. offline Thanks yes. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. For more Matrix Moments episodes, you can head to www.matrixpartners.in/blog. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube for more updates.